Look who else came to see me today. Uh, she was just right here. There she is. She was on the porch just now looking for me. She's stashing some nuts. I, had, I gave her some walnuts out there. Walnuts and cashews and some sunflower seeds. So she's She ran back across the street when the hawk was over here a few minutes ago. She'll run to a tree over there across the street. But this tree is well camouflaged. I mean, there's a lot of places you could stoop and hide. You just have to stay really quiet. This is her tree right here. But when the hawk was over here, she ran across the street. Come on, you gonna stay right there? Wait till I leave. Hmm. She's lying down. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Shalom, shalom. Oh, here she comes. Come on. Come on. Looks like a tiny little scorpion ant. The sparrows are out. My little sparrow friends are out. They're feeding. The chicks from a um, couple of weeks ago, they've gotten much bigger now. And um, I don't know what kind of spider this is. It looks like a little tiny scorpion ant. Anyway, the chicks have gotten bigger. some kind of spider on the right there. Some kind of spider. Anyway, uh, the sparrows are out. They've been in the yard all day today. It's around 3.30 in the afternoon. They're flying in and out of the bush and uh, they're coming back and forth to feed on some of the seeds that are still out there. Uh, having a hard time catching them. They're so well camouflaged you know, they got that gray man camouflage. That's why they're not easy to see. But they're in the bush over there. Flying in and out. There's about 20, maybe 30 of them. And they've got much larger now. They're bigger now than what they were two weeks ago. When they were little baby chicks, they used to come over here and hang out on the windowsill right over here when they were learning how to feed. Hey, little one. Hey, little squirrel. He's looking at me in the window. I pulled the uh, blinds back. And he's looking right at me, one of the squirrels. <clears throat> and there's some over here. The little chicks over here eating some of those, some of the millet that I put out over there. They're eating millet. And 
to the got some way over there. Yeah, not gonna be able to see them through the screen. If I open the door, they're gonna take off. There's one big bushy tail squirrel right there. And the other one is right there. Getting closer and closer. Hey, little one. And uh, I guess they're waking up from their afternoon nap. Because nobody was out here uh, the hot part of the day. Yeah, ain't no spiders coming out in the window. I don't know what kind of spider this is. But it's a... Uh, I don't know what kind of spider that is. As long as he's on the outside looking in. Yeah, there he is. Crawling all over the window. See? And he's smart. He's on the inside of the screen, but he's on the outside of the window. So the birds can't get him. Now you tell me spiders aren't smart. Hmm. Huh. Because if he was on the inside of this window, he'd be crushed by now. You know, I mean, like, I love nature, but I'm not crazy. I don't want to get bit by any kind of spider at all. They're all toxic, you know, and you won't even know that you've been bitten till several hours later. It may be the next day when you realize you've been bitten by a spider. I got bit by a wolf spider. I think it was a wolf spider. And I was sick for two days. I was sick for two days after that bite. And it swelled up to a little blister. That's how I knew it was a spider bite. Because a spider bite, you know, it may look like a little mosquito bite at first. But uh, it will swell up within a day or so. And it will blister and burst. And that's how you know, okay, I've been bit by a spider. And you will be sick. If it's a poison spider, you will be sick. A couple of days. I was sick a couple of days. I've been bitten by... Um, I was bitten by a brown recluse one time. But I was fortunate that it was a little baby one. But... You know, the area where it bit me, the toxins from it, the toxins had my leg numb in that spot where it bit me. And it was a tiny, it, it was a little bitty one, a little bitty one that bit me. So you can imagine what a, a larger adult one would do. It's the shady part of, of uh, the day. Uh, where the trees let off the most shade. So it's kind of hard for me to show anything unless they come close to the porch. And I didn't do much this week. So you're trying to get me, huh? Little spider. Trying to figure out how you're going to get in here. He could probably get in here if he really wanted to. But you better stay right there. You hear me? You better stay out there on the other side of that window. Yeah, I was sick for about two days when that spider bit me. And um, it just kept itching. Hey, little one. Hey. That's a mommy squirrel. I see her breast. This one here. This is the mommy squirrel. And that one over there is a little male juvenile over there. He should be, I think that's a male. I 
He looks like a gray squirrel because he has a white chest. And there's another little female gray squirrel. She has a white chest. But the fox squirrels have a little chestnut brown color chest. Pretty, uh, pretty chestnut red color. This spider is making me nervous. He's trying to get in here. Probably got an egg sack somewhere around here, too. I'm not opening the window for you to come in here. This is going to be a standoff. But yeah, till this day, and that was like four or five years ago when I got bit by that reclusive spider. And I, that little area, the little patch size area on my thigh is still numb to this day. And I was fortunate I didn't have to have, uh, have it actually cut out, you know. And um, I didn't go to the hospital or, or nothing like that. Because I didn't even realize I had been bitten until, you know, like, like I said, a couple of days later, you know. But it's good to have uh, anti-venom if you have some of that, you know, for snake bite and spider bite. Especially for brown recluse spiders, black widow spiders, stuff like that. You won't always die from a spider bite, but you will get sick from it. They do make you sick. You will be sick, like, with flu-like symptoms, you know, d depending on how allergic you are. I was talking so much about the spider. The sparrows went back into the bush, and I just saw a grackle come. A grackle is in the tree, um, in this tree right here. He just flew in. Come the grackles, Grandpa Grackle. Here come, here come the whole mob. Grandpa Grackle with Lady Grackle. And probably see some chicks coming in. They were here earlier this afternoon. I forget to eat sometimes. I haven't eaten all day. I had some water, um, about maybe a, a cup of tea, I think. But I haven't eaten all day, and it's almost, I think it's almost 4 o'clock. Hey, Grandpa! Hey, Grandpa Grackle. I'm glad to see y'all. Y'all like to shit on everybody's car and everything and tear up everybody's driveway with all that poop and stuff. But people really just don't appreciate you. All the bugs you eat in return. Eat all those bugs out there. They will even eat poop. You know... You have to try to, you know, get out there and scoop the poop. You don't want them to get sick. But those birds have a real good tolerance for uh, refuse. So they can, they will eat poop. They will eat decay, carrion, or, uh, you know, other decayed animals. They will eat garbage. So keep the garbage can closed. You know, you don't want them to accidentally ingest any plastic or anything like that because that... That will tear their insides up. They have not eaten this lizard yet, but that's okay because the lizard does his job too. He's back there on that tree, way back there. He's on the tree back there. You see his little head sticking out on the left side. I'm glad that little lizard made it. And he's, he's eating up a bunch of bugs too. You know, anything that eats bugs, you know, and keeps down pestilence, that's what you want in your yard. Even if they do crap a little here and there, you know, because you can take the hose pipe and wash the crap off, you know. Pour a little uh, 
pine saw. And if you don't want to use chemicals, you can use the uh, old fashioned Arm and Hammer baking soda. You can use that and it will sanitize and um, clean everything. Hey, Grandpa Grackle. Hey, Grandpa. He's way over there. They had their tails fanned out earlier and I didn't get to catch it so you could see how beautiful it looks. Almost like a peacock. When they when the great tail fans their feathers out, those their tail feathers, really, really beautiful. But um I didn't see too many squirrels in the yard today. I only saw about maybe four. And uh, there was one in the front yard. And um, they've been having squirrel wars. The squirrel wars are still going on. They're still fighting over the trees. And uh, the males are being pushed out by the females. Because females... Uh, they're more dominant in the squirrel community than the males are. Um, they will run the males off when they overcrowd the trees. The females will actually run the males off. So you have to pay attention to that, especially the young juvenile males, and, and they will get pushed out of the, uh, of the yard or out of the area which forces them to move to other trees. And uh, because when the females uh, go in the heat and when, when they, uh, what do you call that? Uh, well, when they're impregnated, they may be impregnated, I think it's four, uh, I think it's six weeks. I think it's four to six weeks. And then they have a litter of pups, but they don't let the male hang around when they have the pups. You know, he'll come around, but they won't let him stay in the den with, with them or in the tr inside the tree trunk with them. They, they push the males out. And so the females really determine... Um, how many squirrels you're gonna see in the tree. You know, but there's normally no more than one to two squirrels per tree, unless she has a litter of pups, and then it's just her and her pups that live in the tree. You know, and she'll push the males out. So the females are chasing the males out of the tree that they choose to raise their pups and then they'll raise their pups for about a month or two and when the pups uh, their eyesight gets good because their eyesight is not good the first month it, it gets better when they get older and by the time they're two months old they're ready to, to leave the den and go out and feed themselves and when they get to that to that age then She'll lead them away from her tree and take them to another tree of their own. Show them how to get a tree of their own. And they have to fight for that tree, you know. But sometimes siblings will stick together and there may be two siblings per tree, you know. They'll, they'll all be in the same area and they come back and they visit each other and feed and share feeding grounds with each other. They're, they're still community oriented, but the females are more dominant than the males because the females dictate what tree they're gonna take for the, for the pups and they'll chase the males off. And the females are usually they're about as big as, as the grown males are. They're, they're about pretty much the same size as a full-grown adult male, 
but they they put on a little extra body fat. So the females usually look bigger than all the other squirrels. They're just fattier. And you can you can tell, look, look at this spider. Yeah, you want me so bad, don't you? You want me so, so bad, don't you? You want to just get in here and just tear me up, don't you? Huh? I know you do, but you're not getting in here. This window stays locked 24-7. You're not getting in here. You're not getting in here. And you have any more little babies, they better go on the outside. Talking to the spider. I'm getting on his nerves because I'm in, in his domain. I guess he feels like, look, this is my window. So I pay the rent here. Nah. You can go live in a tree. Everybody else lives in a tree. Hey, mommy. She, she can hear me. She's looking up. Uh, she, you gonna eat everything? She might have some more pups coming toward the end of the year. They'll probably be here by September. They'll probably be here by September. There's another female that lives in the front in the ash tree. She was chasing squirrels back across the street. They were fighting over them, the trees. Uh, I saw the ravens early this morning. They cleaned up the neighbor's yard over there, way over there, because uh, the trash has spilled out. And whatever bread or whatever they tossed out there that they were eating on that. And the construction is still going on. They're still digging up stuff, tearing up stuff. So that's why the kit um, fox was over here last night. That's That was my first time seeing one. Yeah, the kit fox. You heard me say that, huh, lady? She stuck her head up when I said fox. <laughs> you might think they don't pay attention to us, and they do. Animals can understand English. They can understand every human language on the planet. Don't ever think they don't understand you when you are when you talk to them. They understand exactly what you're saying. Because they can sense it. They can sense it. So... Um, but they have been finding over these trees now for the past couple of months. Uh, and I haven't seen as many males, only a couple. So, uh, the females must be getting ready to have pups again. They'll probably be here. It's August now. They'll probably be here in September. Maybe September, early October. And, um, they'll raise them up until December or January before they bring them out of the den. If it's not too cold, they'll bring them out of the den. Because they'll be blind the first few weeks. They'll be totally blind. And their eyesight won't come in for at least a month. About a month, month and a half, then they can see. By the time they're two months, they'll be out you know, running around, learning how to uh, feed and stuff. Let's look at this now. That's all the noise and all the digging. I was fortunate today they didn't turn the water off today. If it's after four, I guess they're getting off. They leave around four o'clock. Around 4 o'clock, 4.30. Yeah, you want me bad, don't you? You want me bad, huh? Yeah. 
You can just taste the human blood and saliva. You just can't wait to puncture a hole somewhere. You're just trying to figure out how you're going to get to me, huh? I know you're not trying to figure out how you're going to get out of there because you wouldn't have gotten in there in the first place. You found a way in. You can find a way out. Dang on spider. Where are you? There he is. I don't even know what kind of spider that is. And it's a big one though. It's really not that big. It's not that big. I've seen spiders way bigger than that. I've been bitten by so many spiders. Should have an immunity to it. But anyway, I chased all the sparrows away, making all this noise in the window, bumping up against the window. That's who I came to, to look at today. And uh, I think they're gone. Nobody's back there but mommy. Got the whole yard to herself. One little long squirrel. And a spider. <laughs> She's just having a good time eating everything back there. You can see that face. So happy. Happy squirrel. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, I have some other stuff I might put with this tape. And just overlap it. But anyway, shalom, shalom. Bye, baby. Bye, mommy. Bye. Bye, you bothersome spider. Shalom.